share with you what we're doing at the Attorney General's office to push back against hate and intolerance. I wish it weren't necessary, but we now offer a $25,000 reward for information leading to a conviction for a bias crime. We've added a hotline, 1-800-277-BIAS, an email line, bias at njdcj.org, for the same purpose. Those complaints now go to a specialized bureau with law enforcement officers, with prosecutors specially trained to address this type of conduct and investigate it. We've also taken steps to ensure that law enforcement officers at every level across our state can effectively identify, report, and respond to such conduct. And we've made clear our commitment to investigating and prosecuting these matters vigorously, not only to seek justice for the victims of such conduct, but also to send a strong deterrent message to those that engage in this type of hateful conduct that it won't be tolerated in this state and that we will bring the full measures of all of our offices, our 21 county prosecutors, the Attorney General's office, to bear on those who commit such hateful conduct. That's my pledge to everyone in this room today. But even that's not enough. You know, we talk about children. My office is working with our state's Department of Education to put together a curriculum, an anti-bias educational program for middle and high school students. Because we know that children are not born to hate. They're not born with hate in their hearts. Like that child in that candy aisle, they learn it. They're taught it. And as Nelson Mandela said in his biography, in his autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. But that's not all. As much as I wish that wasn't necessary, our state police, we have Colonel Callahan today, the men and women of our state police are going to houses of worship, are going to schools to ensure their safety, to teach people how to report bias crimes, to make sure that schools and religious schools and mosques are all safe. And another way in which we're pushing back when this conduct doesn't rise to the criminal level, we're leveraging our division of civil rights to enforce our law against discrimination. The nation's, the country's oldest, and in some regards, most respected anti-discrimination law. And each year our division takes in hundreds of complaints and investigates them fully. And they range in all types of housing discrimination, workplace discrimination. But these cases involve real people such as a young woman who responded to an advertisement to rent an apartment in Elizabeth. At first, the landlord appeared eager to show her the apartment. She was a prospective tenant. But when she arrived for her appointment wearing a headscarf, that landlord's enthusiasm disappeared. The conversation that he had with that prospective tenant was recorded on her telephone. He asked her if she was a Muslim. And when the young woman answered that she was, he replied that he did not rent to Muslims and then demanded that she leave the premises. Subsequently, the man told a TV news crew that this young Muslim woman was part of an ISIS conspiracy to extort money from him. All she wanted to do was rent an apartment. And while he's only one landlord, that case is important because it exemplifies the kind of bigotry that still exists today and it exemplifies our office's commitment to eradicating it. No person should have to hide their faith or her headscarf or the color of his or her skin to find a place to live. And so through our Division of Civil Rights, we'll continue to come to the defense of Muslims, Jews, Hispanics, members of the LGBTQ community, or any other protected group who's facing mistreatment or discrimination. 